Speaking to Azim Rafiq, also changing things in our country with um, his testimony yesterday. He fought back tears when he spoke to a parliamentary committee describing his harrowing experiences of racism whilst at the Yorkshire County Cricket Club. He says he felt isolated. He felt humiliated. And he explained all of this to MPs. Here's just some of his testimony. Incredibly brave. So emotional. Mm. And um, we're joined now by a former player with a different cricket club, Essex, Zoheb mm. Rashid Sharif, who says Azim Rafiq's account is a mirror of his own experience of racism when he was at Essex. Zoheb Sharif, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. For joining us. Um, as you listened to what Azim Rafiq was saying, what did you feel? Um, I was shocked. I was shocked and saddened because um, I didn't think it still happened. Mm. But it's obviously been going on for a lot longer than even probably even before when I was playing. Um, so my, my, my experiences go back about 20 years now mm. to when I made my debut. You know, I, I was unfortunate enough to make my debut the day after the September the 11th attacks. And I was labelled bomber straight away coming into the changing room. And it was made worse that the fact that the game was, it was raining during the game, so we spent a lot of time in the changing room. Mm. So that bomber nickname just stuck. Oh. That's, sorry, that's shocking. Are you, are you, so you walk into the, the changing room, and this is this one individual or a number of individuals? It was accepted uh, across quite a few individuals who would say these sort of things. Um, and obviously, as a young kid, you know your dream is to make your professional debut. You, you, that that is what you aspire to be, um, and aspire to play, right? To make your debut for the Essex first team. And straight away when I came in, it was bomber. And this, you know, this didn't stop. This went on for, for all the time that was there. And that transition to curry muncher. Just to understand... That was a term that was used as well. Yeah. Curry muncher. Gosh. Just to understand, we're talking here about 2001, you made your debut. So that is the year of um, the 9-11 mm. attacks. And, yeah. and that's where the, 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 the bomber word comes from. And yeah. through to 2004, just take us back to... Essex County Cricket Club at that uh, at that time. Who was who was the club captain when you made your debut? Um, I believe it was a person called Ronnie Irani. Ronnie Irani. Yeah. And um, and who was the coach when you were there? Um, I think it was either Keith Fletcher or Graham Gooch. I think Keith Fletcher handed over to Graham Gooch during two thousand and one. Yeah. Also, um, it was towards the end of the career of Nasser Hussain. Yeah. Alistair Cook's just coming through. I mean, there's some, yeah. some big figures here. And, of course, Ronnie Irani um, with um, uh, Indian Heritage, um, Nasser as well. Were there not voices in that changing so, room who so, were speaking up and saying, this is wrong? So, a lot of the time, Nasser wasn't there because he right. was, I think he was away with England. And I think Ronnie was involved with England at that point right. as well. So, but... No one, no one really, no one stopped it. No, it, it was, was just, it, just kind of it, it was just common. It was just commonplace that you would walk in, and and it was just not me. It was, it, there was a uh, other players as well. Where it, with, it was just curry muncher, and, and that even got so sophisticated on their side, they transitioned it into a muncher or munch, um, mm. and and this this happened all all throughout all throughout my career at the club. Did you? have the feeling that you could, at any stage, say, it's not acceptable, it's not funny, no. it's pretty insulting, mm. it's actually racist, and I don't want you to no. do that. No. Obviously, at that time, I was a young, I was a young yeah. kid. I, was, I think I was 18 when I made my debut. Um, I remember one senior figure saying to me, I remember I was praying it, on the corner of the outfield at Chelmsford, well away from the team, mm. just five minutes, just quick prayer. I remember a senior figure taking me to the side and saying, look, you can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm just praying for literally five minutes mm -hmm. there. So the fact uh, you were following your Muslim faith yeah. was part of the motivation? Yeah. So as a Muslim, you know, it's my mm -hmm. duty to pray five times a day. So I was just doing a quick afternoon prayer. Um, what senior figure took me to the side and said, look, you can't do that in front of the team. You've got to do that elsewhere. And when I pushed back on it just a little bit, I said, look, it's just a quick five-minute prayer. Mm -hmm. Look, it doesn't matter. So then in the end, I thought, you know, I can't really say anything here. 
And so in the end, I had to end up playing in the, in the changing room away from everyone else in the far corner. Um, where at Essex, there's like a, an indoor school where you've got to go in there and pray. Uh, I just went in there and just started praying away from everyone that's right next to the showers. So it wasn't even like... Do you think that your teammates right? at the time just thought this was funny banter? It was. Or do, or do you think that they knew that they were hurting you and that's what encouraged them to keep going? Um, it was banter to them. It was banter. Just a laugh? Just a laugh. Curry muncher. Curry... And what effect does that have on you, your confidence? Um, I, I can imagine pretty destabilising. Mm. Especially in an in a industry where it's, it's purely results-based. Yeah. Um, it, it hurt. It really hurt. Because you, you want to come into a changing room and feel accepted. Yes. It really, really hurt. Mm. But the only thing you could do at that time was really just try and put your head down and just try and get through it and just try and come out the other side by, by sheer performance. Which I was, which I was lucky enough I did, but I just never got the opportunities in the end. You did, and you did perform. Mm. You say you made your debut in two thousand and one, but you were let go in two thousand and four. Yes, yeah, so I was let go in two thousand and four. Um, so in two thousand and four, I spent most of my time in the reserve team, yeah. and I was told to perform. And I think the stats are out there. I think I averaged over a hundred in the second team. Over a hundred. Over a hundred. How many first team players were averaging over a hundred? Um, not many, not many. Not, I think the next first team player uh, who went on to have good careers at the club were averaging 16 at that time. So what do you think the reason was that you were released? I can only put it down to, to, to my race. Because I was told by a committee member that no matter what you do, you will not play first team, no matter how well you do. A committee member told you that? Yeah, no matter how well you do. And this was off the back of me scoring a lot of hundreds in the second team. Um, and I think there was even a game where I said, look, please give me one more chance. They go, look, it doesn't matter, but here's another game. And I got, I think in that game, I got 100 runs. Have you now formalised these complaints? Yes, so I've, I've reached out. The county are aware of, of, um, of my uh, yeah. so-called allegations against them. They but... say they're working with the ECB now to investigate, don't they? Yeah, but I've, I've, I've not really heard anything. I spoke, I spoke a little you bit. You don't know about what the investigation? No, I don't think Essex have formally launched an investigation yet. Um, I spoke a little bit to the chairman of, of, of Essex. Right. Um, but I don't know if they've officially launched an So an do you investigation. feel they're taking it seriously? I hope they are, in, in, <laughs> especially with uh, Azim's, Azim's case. Mm. So I hope they are. Um, but you know, it's just not me. It's not me as well. There's others who have come out as well at Essex. Um, as Ian Rafiq said yesterday, that he believed cricket was institutionally racist and he wouldn't want his son going into it. Mm. Do you feel the same way? Yes, yes. Mm. Um, I think that's. I think some of the examples that he mentioned, and obviously going back to my sort of examples as well, where Curry Mancha Bomber were accepted terms and no one really bat an eyelid to him, really. Yeah. And as you said, I mean, your experience is 20 years ago. Mm. His experience was in the last few years. Mm. It must be pretty dispiriting for you to think that things yeah, haven't changed. It's sad that it still, it still goes on. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really sad that it still goes on. And hopefully now, with Azim talking and hopefully a few others talking, we can put an end to this once and for all. Well, in a statement, the chief executive of Essex Cricket, John Stevenson, said, I'm extremely shocked and saddened to hear of historic racial allegations involving a former player dating back to 2001. There is absolutely no place for discrimination of any kind at Essex County Cricket Club, and we have a zero-tolerance policy towards racism. All allegations, regardless of when they took place, will be investigated thoroughly and urgently. We're working with the ECB to assist us with these investigations. You would like somebody who's investigating to come and talk to you. Yeah. Yeah, I would love it. I, would I, think, love it. I, think, I think they should quickly. Yeah. So, Hib Sharif, thank you very much indeed for joining us thank this you. morning. Thank you.